Well, how do there, people in the viewerverse? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm back inside of Light No Fire. It's basically us playing No Man's Sky, Light Light No Fire, and we call it Light No Sky. Anyway, the event is over. Guess who won the event? Guess which team won overall? It was the 07 Brew Crew. My crew. That's who. That's who won. Our crew. And I am the, the, um, the winner, the leader winner faction whatever yeah so i think there was quite a lot of death kills over from um, the 07 brew crew i think i think ghost like bagged like eight people total something like that i think i managed to take out maybe four or five but that, that freaking awesome everybody that took part inside of this season season two was freaking epic there was a lots of lots of like little mini niches that sort of kicked off little sort of like uh, groupings it's like myself stormageddon and uh, ominous gaunt and ghost light dynamic duo like the three musketeers plus one yeah, you know, like d'artagnan there, there was three of them wasn't there there was there was four of them total yeah i'm not getting math wrong am i anyway let's jump on over into game because I'm actually inside of the actual system right now for Light No Sky. And you can see here I've got myself the exotic ship that flies into this area. Now I'm not on the Light No Sky planet right now. This is a neighbouring planet in the same system. So over on the Discover Eyes, here we go, is this planet here. Joyot Tau. Okay. And on this planet I have actually built a PvP base. Now this is going to be for everybody that took part in Season 2 of light no sky but after we've done our base tours because we're going to announce the grand architect i am going to start doing live streams on maybe the monday or tuesday evening i haven't decided which one yet and i'm going to invite anyone that's on my friends list over here whether you was in light no sky or not to do battle against my light no sky player now this isn't my legacy save so he's not all that powerful i mean there you go there's a damage potential there so you can see what you're up against that's me, that's my multi-tool, that's how much damage I can do. If you want to come over and challenge me, that'd be good. You know, you've got now until I open this up to the whole world to get your character up to par, up to standard. And yeah, so I'll give you the coordinates of where this is anyway, for those that are in light, no sky, because you already know the planetary code. Let me just take myself off the screen just for a moment. Zoom, I'm gone. There you go. That's the actual X and Y coordinates on this planet. There's a lot of bases in this system, and at the moment, it might not render in. But to be honest, it's just an archive at this point, okay? And all I've done is I've made it so you can't walk underneath the landing pads, because the landing pads have got like a little glitch. You see, look, I put, I put some um, walls around it. Those walls you can actually walk under if you don't actually, you know, band them off like I've just done there. Now, because we're doing this whole Grand Architect thing, and there's a lot of bases already on the planet, what I'd like to urge is anybody that took part in Season 2 of Light No Sky, any of your bases, so hit your bases from a teleporter, and go to the bases in the, the current, system, uh, current system here, the manufacturing facility. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to go there and I'm going to delete that base. So here you go, let's whop! Oh God! Zoom! Tally-ho! And away I go. Okay, well, I've arrived at Kated here, so all I'm going to do is head on over to this and delete it. And delete base. The only thing with that is, as I now have no teleporters. Yeah, bit of a problem, that one. But it does not matter. It does not matter a jot. Now, because this event is actually over now, and, you know, the 07 Brew Crew are the winners, you might hear me say that a few times. Yeah, it does feel good to say it, to be honest. The 07 Brew Crew! Well, the winners of season two. Did, did you hear Cynical? Are you watching? Are you watching Cynical? Are you watching? Yeah, because, you know, Ricey won season one and uh, the O7 Brew Crew won season two. I kind of hope that Cynical doesn't win season three. <laughs> See what I did there? Oh, fudging heck, none of these doors are bloody open. Oh, look, it's a reinforced door. How am I supposed to get out? No, are you having a freaking laugh, mate? You're having a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> That'd teach me, wouldn't it? Hey, cynical. I, look, I can blame more. I, I can get out. I've never had that happen before. That was just bizarre. I've had to shoot my way out. Okay. Well, that's new. You know what? 
because because it's over like i was saying what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put myself into creative mode for now just so i don't have these sentinels chasing me for one but two i'm also going to turn off my network so no one could see me do this inside of the event even though the event's over and i'm going to call in my old ship i'm going to fly up to the nexus and i'm going to go and delete all my other redundant bases Okay, Jumps, I'm just going to record myself running through the Nexus on my actual PlayStation 5. This is my PlayStation 5 right now. And then I'm going to get some PC footage of my PC that, you know, nearly cost two grand to frickin' build and do a comparison between the PlayStation 5 footage and the PC footage just to see which one looks sharper, crisper and lovelier once the video is all rendered. So you're probably going to see a little bit of footage about now. Well, not exactly now, but in a second of my PC footage. Okay, cool. I'm going to go teleport down to the planet, pick another base. PC footage, now! Okay, jump. So this is inside of PC. Now, I watched Jason Plays' video, and he actually said that the ultra settings don't actually make the game better, but make it worse in a lot of cases like the reflections the reflections cause all these sort of like pixel jitters and things like that so i've actually emulated or tried to match as best as i possibly can the settings that jason blaze has got so if i go into my graphics now i'll show you what those are so yeah the, the only difference is he's he's on like an nvidia card whereas i'm on an amd radeon so scrolling down though i left textured quality on ultra but he's put his on high and then everything else I've matched to Jason's exactly. Okay. And it gives reason as to why. It's like the actual, uh, say like the, you know, the, the, the reflections like I mentioned before. If I just put this on ultra just for a moment and hit apply, as long as it doesn't say I've got to restart to change it. If I look around now, sometimes you see these little weird pixely bits appearing. And it doesn't look as good. So I'll go back into here, go back down here. And if I go back to enhanced on reflections, that should make it better. And it's almost like the volumetric effects as well, especially inside of the Nexus. You've got all these plumes of like gas and stuff. And also the neon lights, they put out some sort of fluorescent hue. If you put that up too high, it actually ruins it. And you get all these pixels appearing on the screen, all these artifacts. But now that I've tweaked it and I've matched what Jason's settings are, I think that's a lot better. But is it better than my PlayStation 5? We go back to the PlayStation 5 now. See you back in PlayStation 5 world. So yeah, I can just return to the Nexus. That's pretty darn freaking lovely, isn't it? Nice. Well, let's, um, let's go portal back up there and go use the portal to go to another base. So you're probably thinking, well, why did you get such an awesome PC? Well, it's mainly to build, play games that just aren't available on console, you know, like the Star Citizen and stuff like that. But also I'm thinking about maybe trading in the Xbox and um, picking up the Oculus 3. Yeah, I think that could be quite nice to get the Oculus free. I might leave my 07 arena. No, actually, no, I've got a new arena, so probably don't really need that. I'll tell you what, I'll leave it just in case. We go to this one. There we go. Chicka pow. And from what I'm hearing, all the Xbox games anyway, you can play on the PC. You can even get like the equivalent of Game Pass for PC. Or, or I, I don't really understand it. Let us know in the comments whether I'm talking out my backside. There we go. We'll get rid of that one. Zoom. Done, dilly, and done. But yeah, I don't see the point in keeping the Xbox much anymore. And also, Star Citizen, the game that I got the Xbox for, is on PC and it's got more mods. I know that you can get mods on the old Xbox version as well. There we go. Anyway, anyone that took part inside of Season 2, if you've got loads of these little static satellite bases, maybe delete them like I'm doing so it clears up all of the ones that we don't need to help with rendering of all the bases that people need to tour. That's why I'm doing this. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup. Also, it gives you your part count back for Season 3, doesn't it? I mean, my HQ, I had to actually delete, didn't I? The one that looked like a giant st stone turtle. I had to delete that because Cynical beat me. He killed me. Yeah. Yeah, he killed me. Fair and square. Yeah. Not not, not bitter about that at all, Cynical. No. But then again, he went overall, though. 
Yeah, you might have won the battle, but who won the freaking war? Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's a brewery. We won. I see. Uh, Golly. You know, it, it's all part of the banter, isn't it? It's all part of the banter. Love you really shouldn't have called, I okay. guess. Oh, I'm leaving Ricey out of this, aren't I, really? So, I mean, Ricey, I'd say, sort of sat back, really. They were quite quiet. They didn't stir up any drama or do any sort of shenanigans. It was all the freaking Crayola kingdom, pressing buttons, doing things, doing spies. I mean, yeah, ghosts were pretty darn funny this season. If you didn't see what happened, that was pretty good fun. So basically, Cynical said, ah, Ghost is one of my spies. When he wasn't. Ghost was not a spy. But Ghost was like, you know what? If you want me as a spy, sod it. I'm going to do it. And he went over and pretended to be a spy. So everybody in the Crayola Kingdom were like, what the fuck is going on? Is he a spy or isn't he a spy? And it caused all this weird, mini drama, confusion, conflict. Well, season three, Ghost is actually becoming a faction leader. So if that's what he's like when he's just a normal player, I don't know what we've letting ourselves in for for season three. It's going to be freaking interesting, I tell you, people. Freaking interesting. But anyways, the Empire, the way that they handled themselves with their coordination, their communication, was outstanding. They had, like, what, maybe a, I don't know, a 40th in head count than the 07 brew crew and what they managed to do with their members was pretty impressive they managed to take out a lot of the crayola kingdom a lot of the 07 brew crew and i was thinking okay they could actually win this even though they haven't got hardly as many members they did a they did a sterling job the empire and the the, the crayola kingdom done a freaking good job too i mean they're into their more their guerrilla guerrilla warfare tactics i mean there was um boo boo kitty and her base with teleporters all over the place she was running around like a little hamster in a rotor stack and we're trying to kill her she was all over the freaking place it oh, took freaking ages to take her out really did yeah she was proper bedded in you know like um trench warfare or whatever the tunnels that they had in freaking vietnam or whatever she was like one of those she was proper bedded in in trench warfare trying to get her out was damn difficult she nearly took us out trying it you know so anyway i'm back at this base here that i've built on that neighboring planet and it is just a colossal archive now i haven't done anything too complex here but i'm thinking this can be our little mini sort of like area where we can fight there's all sorts of volcanoes going off in the background i love how it looks in the day and at night i mean look at this at night it looks pretty nice now, because we are down here, you don't get overly affected too much by the hazards of the planet. Sometimes a storm might roll in, you might need some heat protection, but you know, that all plays into part of the dangers of this. So, I think this could work quite nicely, you know? And, like I say, I've cubed in all of the landing pads that you could walk under before. It's like this one here. You could walk underneath this. You could go through the walls. You can't anymore because I put blanking normal walls on the dang thing. Ha! So, yeah, it's all sort of set. And even if it doesn't render in properly, I still think it's going to be OK. I've put down a couple of player landing pads as well. So I, I think this is going to be a nice little place to do some PvP. Now, if you do want to add me for PvP, I'll put my friend code on the screen. Oh, actually, let's let's do it inside of game rather than make things difficult for myself. So if I go over to here, view nearby player list, if I go down... Oh, the buttons aren't freaking there, are they? Okay. Um, there we go. Show no man's... There you go. There's my code right there, people. So that's my friend's code. Add me as a friend and hopefully... I'll be able to do some PvP against you once I open this up to all. For now, it's going to be the people that took part inside of Season 2, because they've got the portal code. The only thing I haven't given anyone right now is the portal code to the system. Okay. Now, we want to get the base tours done and declare the Grand Architect before we open it up to everybody. Because as soon as we open this up to people, I know that they're going to put down bases here, even if it's just to get back here quickly. And then there's a load of extra bases then for us to go and review and we've got to worry about rendering issues. So I'm doing it 
we're getting prepped but hopefully i'll be able to hit up some members of season two get them here like on a monday or tuesday do a bit of combat with them so at least you can see what i've got in mind for this once it goes live for everyone and yeah it's just basically a battle arena and we just stay to the lower confines you're not allowed up where the npcs are just in this lower area so there's little areas for cover and it's a case of like yeah take that you ha ha boom 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 da -da 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 -da. You know what? I've actually got a battle that I did with Ominous Gaunt at this actual structure. In fact, I've done a few rounds of him. I put the video up there. Go hit that up and you'll see what I mean. Oh, I think I just heard. I think I just heard another exotic ship land. Not my one. You heard that, right? Like, yeah, look, there's another one right here. This isn't my one. This is this is um, this guy's. Yeah, make it like offer this this lands quite often here people so yeah if you do come here this this is the actual exotic that's on offer make an offer on life form ship there it is right there the qw8 jonami jonami that's quite a nice tidy little ship to be honest so yeah i've got one of them pretty much every single person on this um that's like a little mini event of ours i think has got one of those now it's pretty nice it flies in quite regularly here you don't have to wait around long and if you're already here waiting to do combat with somebody there's a good chance you might see it anyway i'm just going to hit a save there we go done dilly and done right get better go back over to me then i guess so people inside the view of us hopefully you're going to join us for a little bit of pvp once it's actually open to everyone but or you're going to tune in and watch me do some PvP against a couple of people from the old um, no, Light No Sky event. Hopefully I can get Ominous Gaunt in or um, I wouldn't mind fighting against um, Stormageddon because he was pretty OP. I wouldn't mind having a rematch now that um, Ghost has got his, his character all leveled back up. But what I'm thinking is when I open this up to more players, if I can come across some really good PvP players and send you the invite to Season 3, I could get some really good fighters on my team this time. However, what we're going to do this time is on the actual form, we're toying with the idea of you say, I would like to be in the 07 Brew Crew, and then maybe putting in a second choice like the Empire or Crayola, or whatever Ghost wants to call his one, as a secondary choice. And then if that way one team has got too many members we can say sadly we've had to give you your second choice you know like when you used to apply to go to a certain high school sometimes you wouldn't get your first choice you might get your second i don't know whether we're going to put on first choice second choice third choice something like that so you might get into the catchment that you want or you might not but you know it'd be nice anyway to rot rotate players around now season one we did name knights and the knights got to choose a weapon to carry over into their next season but what we're thinking, because there's this new load balancing and we want to have equal players on every team, maybe not have the Knights. And instead, just say that every single player that took part in the previous season can, if they wish, if they wish, they don't have to, transfer their save over. And if they do end up on a different team, they might have to go to an appearance modifier, make the changes to make them specific to that team. But you get to keep your tech. You get to keep all your modules, all your techs. So you don't have to do that grind again. And But it's choice. You can either keep that or not. And basically, if you do keep that, call yourself a knight if you want. You're a knight. You've made it through to the next round. Whatever. Um, but yeah, you're knighted. You've knighted yourself in a roundabout way. So doing it that way, I think, might actually take out some of the grind. I think a lot of players can then just sort of like, you know, concentrate more on their build or looking for those really stellar modules to make their um, multi-tool even more powerful than before. So yeah anyways in the background you could probably see this archive let's just put the sun in the sky it does look a lot better in the daytime there you go so this is my battle arena and hopefully i'll be giving out that portal code to everybody at some stage anyway but yeah like i say monday or tuesday i will be coming online and uh maybe doing some battling with a couple of people from the actual season thank you the 07 brew crew without you we wouldn't have won this our strength was definitely in our numbers and using the discord i'm getting a bit better with the discord and responding a bit quicker on there and coordination i must say we we, we formed our little mini kill parties and we did exactly that we took people to task and we won out and we won because we kept our numbers I think Cynical's crew probably had the better modules, probably had the upper hand when it came to one-on-one -on -one PvP. 
but because there was always two or maybe even three of us we kind of managed to match them in their firepower and came out on top in many of the skirmishes we had and when it comes to the empire they had very similar tactics to us with the actual you know building up and uh, teaming up and they also had decent firepower as well they were a little bit of a mixture between the two you know a little bit of Crayola kingdom cross with you know, the good old 07 brew crew be interested to see what's Ghostlight brings to the table because Ghostlight is very tactical in who he chooses to take out and when and I'd imagine he's probably going to tactically take out key people you know behead the snake so everything else flounders I think he's going to really add an extra dimension to play to this once he comes into season three and then we may be thinking maybe in season four is We've got a couple of other content creators in the mix that have been here since season one and season two. Yes, we've put put Ghostlight over for now, but hopefully it might be uh, there's Gifbox Gaming there, there's Good Guys Free, there may be a couple of other content creators there that we could look to say, okay, would you like to pick up a faction and bring them into the private chat and then get ideas from them and grow this out and keep doing that, you know? I mean, there are only six races, though, so there's only going to be six slots, I think, for faction leaders. But in time, people might want to rotate out. You know, life might get the better of us. You know, I might even say, well, I'll be putting up my place if somebody else wants to jump in content creator wise. And then maybe I might rotate back in at a future date. You know, anything can happen. But anyway, watch this space, people. We'll be letting you know when season three is about to start. Now, in real life, We've got the No Man's Sky meetup at the end of August. I'm doing quite a lot of prep for that. I don't know whether I'm going to have time, even if we find a planet and get ready before the meetup to stick in season three. And I don't know whether I'd have the time to put my eye peepers on it with a focus. I've also got a holiday booked in September, taking my mum to Cyprus to see her brother. Uh, that's around the 16th, uh, that sort of week. So, yeah, I'm going to be heading out for four, four nights. But it's, it's a whole week that I'm not going to be about or able to play. I mean, I can still go on Discord and still coordinate things from there. But you'll be without a team leader inside a game, which might not bode well. So we'll see. But I'm thinking mid-July. I'm actually thinking in mid-July this, this month. Mid-July to maybe late July, we might even see a small update to No Man's Sky. I'm thinking maybe the cloud saves or cross save. I think we might see that. But I, I really honestly think if we don't see anything in July, we, we're probably going to see an update. Maybe in the first or second week of August. But probably before the No Man's Sky meetup. We had echoes drop before last the last meetup is what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking we might get an update the size of Echoes or maybe slightly larger because Shaun of the Murray said it was going to be a big year. I think that could be on the cards inside of mid, mid-August. So, I mean, it's not set in stone. There's none of the signs out there. That this is just pure speculation. This is hyperbole. Yeah, or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, don't don't sort of like mark that in your calendar or anything. But hopefully nearer the time we get a better sense of whether something is happening or not. But yeah, that's that's kind of my gut feeling right now. Look at that little cheesy grin on my Viking. Isn't he lovely? He's a handsome devil, isn't he? Yes, he is. Anyway, people, I think I'm waffling a bit now, so I think I might as well end off. But yeah, thank you, 07 Brew Crew. Every single one of you played your part and you played it well and it brought us the win. Without you, yeah, we wouldn't have done it. So thank you very much, all the 07 Brew Crew. Salute to Mondo to each and every one of you. You're all freaking awesome. You're all freaking winners. Even if you died super early by falling in a puddle or something. Thank you. Thank you very much. No one actually fell in a puddle or died that way. Goodbye. Goodbye. And goodbye again.